Today is October 1st. It's the 275th day of the year, and this is the On This Day podcast. Walking the short distance from Westminster Palace to Westminster Abbey, Mary Tudor, the only child of King Henry VIII and first wife Catherine of Aragon, prepares herself for her coronation as Queen Regent of England and Ireland on this day in 1553. Considering all the trouble she went through to get to the throne, Mary knows image is everything and the details of her coronation matter. As the first official Queen Regent of England and Ireland, if you don't count two other unofficial queens, there is no established precedence for her to follow when it comes to the coronation of a female monarch. Mary understands she must create an image of herself as queen that no one will forget, an image leaving no doubt that she has the authority and is in control. Mary's journey to the throne has been tumultuous. As Henry VIII's only surviving child with first wife Catherine, Mary is first in line to succeed him upon his death, but Henry desires male heirs. He wants his marriage to Catherine annulled so he can move on. The Pope refuses. This doesn't sit well with the king. He decides to take matters into his own hands by, quote, assuming supremacy over religious matters. Henry gets what he wants. The marriage is declared invalid. He marries second wife Anne Boleyn. By this action, his daughter Mary is demoted to illegitimate, losing her place in the line of succession to her newborn half-sister Elizabeth. Mary's relationship with her dad isn't the best. She stops speaking with him for three years. She refuses to acknowledge the new queen or that her half-sister is a princess. Mary used to be a princess, but now she's downgraded to simply the Lady Mary. She also refuses to accept her father as the supreme head of the Church of England. This, and her insistence on being Catholic, annoy him. Princess Elizabeth soon suffers the same fate as Mary when her mother falls out of favor with Henry and literally loses her head. Deemed illegitimate, Elizabeth joins Mary in the rank of lady. She also loses her place in the line of succession. Henry's third wife, Jane Seymour, produces the much-desired male heir, Edward VI. Mary is made his godmother and stepmom Jane will prove to be instrumental in reconciling Henry with his eldest daughter. By the time Henry is on his sixth and final wife, he decides to restore both Mary and Elizabeth back into the line of succession behind Edward with the Third Succession Act. Yet they are still considered illegitimate. When Henry dies, Edward ascends to the throne at the age of nine, Raised Protestant, he sets about making religious reforms. Mary, still a staunch Catholic, is at odds with the young king. Religious differences create tensions in their relationship. Mary's unwillingness to renounce Catholicism becomes a problem for Edward when six years later, a lung infection sends him to his deathbed. Determined not to allow his Catholic sister to take the crown, undoing all his reforms, Edward VI attempts to disinherit her. He'd like his Protestant sister Elizabeth to succeed him. However, advisors tell him he can't disinherit one sister and not the other. Looking for a good option, Edward names his Protestant first cousin once removed, Lady Jane Grey. Proclaimed queen, Jane's reign will last nine days. Supporters switch allegiance from her to Mary. Mary is considered the rightful heir as per the Third Succession Act. She's also a Tudor, and folks can't get enough of this family dynasty. Queen Jane is stripped of her crown and imprisoned in the Tower of London with her husband. Her father-in-law is executed for high treason. 
Though Mary spares Lady Jane and her husband, she's forced to execute them at a later date in response to Protestant plots to overthrow her and restore Jane to the throne. By the time of her coronation on this day in 1553, Mary Tudor, soon to be Queen Mary I, knows the image she must create for herself and her subjects. She takes charge of her own destiny, walking a fine line, presenting herself in the manner of both male monarch and queen consort. She chooses to wear her hair loose as a queen consort would, but dresses as a traditional male monarch. She also chooses a gown of purple velvet, the same color worn by kings in their coronation ceremonies, instead of a queen consort's traditional white and gold. The color purple emphasizes her position as monarch. As far as the coronation ceremony goes, Mary restores it back to the Catholic ceremony that was before Edward's ascension. She's determined to be crowned according to the old custom in contrast to Edward's Protestant ceremony. The coronation is a sacred rite. The bishops and priests wear full canonical dress, and it revolves around the sacrament and transmission of God's grace to the new monarch through anointment by holy oils. Mary refuses to use the same oils as Edward, feeling they are, quote, tainted by their use in a Protestant ceremony. Mary requests and receives a new, uncontaminated supply. After a sermon, Mary's oath, and an anointment, she is dressed in the robes of the state, handed the sword, scepter, and the orbs, indicating her power. She is then crowned with the crown of St. Edward the Confessor. By late afternoon, the coronation is over. A sumptuous feast follows. Mary has succeeded in creating the image of an independent queen regent who will govern exactly as any man has before her. Though still illegitimate, Queen Mary I passes legislation after her coronation on this day in 1553, proclaiming her parents were married, thus legitimizing herself. She then goes about the business of restoring Roman Catholicism to England and Ireland, abolishing both Edward's and Henry's religious laws. She revives the heresy acts, which result in 283 Protestants being burned at the stake. And even though her dad, King Henry VIII, was responsible for over 72,000 executions, she will earn the posthumous nickname, Bloody Mary. There are 91 days left in the year. On This Day is produced by me, Dave Schultz. Thank you very much for listening. Today's episode, written by Elizabeth Schultz. Haven't mentioned it in a while, but if you're new to the show, we're on Twitter at On This Day Pod. Again, that's at On This Day P-O-D. Facebook forward slash On This Day Podcast. And we also have a very simple yet elegant website, onthisdaypodcast.com. You can go there, and at the very top of the page, there are all of the podcatchers that we are featured on. And there are probably some more that aren't listed up there, but oh well, one of these days. So if you're still listening, treat yourself to a Bloody Mary today. Talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>